Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Veronica Brandon Miller. And I'm Kelly Davis Strassbaugh. And this is Goodwill Minnesota's Good News. Where we get to share with you some of the good that's happening in our community. And there is a lot of good. There's a lot, lot of good. goodwill happening in a our community. A lot of goodwill. Yes. <laughs> a lot of good people, goodwill, good news. And, and we have some great people on the show today. But speaking of good news, I just want to reiterate, every time you donate or shop at Goodwill, you're actually creating jobs yes. and more, a more employable community, and we can provide job training, we have job connections, so keep that in mind. Yeah, I always tell people, um, you, you're like, oh, I have a pair of jeans, I don't know what to do with them. I'm like, donate them to Goodwill. Why would I donate them to Goodwill? Actually, none of my friends ask me that because they already know how much I yes. love Goodwill. They say, oh, why should I donate them to Goodwill? That's better. It's more accurate. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then I say, because we can take that money that we, we sell the jeans, we you know make $5.99, but that money goes directly back in the community. Like Veronica said, we do educational opportunities. If you're an employee at Goodwill and English is your second language, we'll help you take classes. If you need to get a GED or a high school diploma, we will help you get that. In fact, we just recently celebrated a graduation of some of our employees who were not able to complete their high school education. They went back on the clock at Goodwill through a partnership with Ave Maria Preparatory School, got their high school diplomas, and now they can go on and do great things. And, and that's what we're all about, changing we want to, lives and, through the power of work. And we want to help people know that. So we're doing that through our 2015 Giving Challenge. Yes, we I are. I had to make that segue because it was just oh, too thank good. You. Thank you. Yes. And speaking of the Giving Challenge, I want to make the announcement that the 2015 Giving it Giving Challenge is made possible by the Community Foundation of Sarasota County, the Patterson Foundation, with the support of the William G. and Marie Selby Foundation, John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, Manatee Community Foundation, and the Herald Tribune Media Group. So many great people. Uh, they are. And Goodwill is participating with Meals on Wheels Plus in our Good Wheels. Yes, there is the logo. And the Good Wheels is an actual stationary bike going around Sarasota and Manatee County. So go on experiencegoodwill.org yep. and find out where the bike's going to be. Yeah, and so far we want to thank a couple of our companies. We've had iHeartMedia, there's Remax Alliance Group, um, Kent Crowley Road 50 Miles, she's fantastic. They're just really getting into it. These companies are awesome. Other companies we have, um, Seaside Bank will have it, uh, Manatee County Government, MetLife, the Herald Tribune, SRQ Chamber of Commerce, SRQ Magazine, Children's World, One Blood, and that list is growing. growing. We are so excited. People are really stepping up. Oh, there's Veronica. We also hey. had the bike at the Lakewood Ranch <laughs> Business Alliance meeting recently. So people are really getting excited yeah, about that's Good That's not an approved picture. I'm just letting you know if I knew it was going to be on And TV. I may not be on here yeah, next week. So anyway, but anyway, we're so excited. <laughs> and uh, just keep that in mind, experiencegoodwill.org. Now, we are thrilled to introduce two wonderful guests. First, we're going to introduce Trish McConnell from the United Way Sun Coast and Diane Ingram from the Manatee County Agricultural Museum, who are also part of the Giving Challenge. Right. So, Trish. Yes, Veronica. Yes, we are thrilled <laughs> to have the United Way on our show. So, now the stage is yours. Okay. okay. Well, thanks, ladies, so much for letting me be on the show. Um, so, I've been in this community for um, almost 30 years. And when I tell folks that I now work for United Way, they say, well, what exactly does United Way do? I mean, we're kind of familiar with the name. And so I tell them that what we do is we concentrate on breaking the cycle of generational poverty. And they go, well, that sounds really huge. Um, so how exactly do you do that? Well, we do that through connecting people, um, creating change, and impacting lives. And so that seems really huge as well. So when you look at our strategies, which is centered around early literacy, youth success, and financial stability, it really is about our ability to be able to do collective impact, if you will, and bringing um, organizations, agencies together, whether we fund them their, and their programs or not, um, and bringing them together to really to be able to concentrate on how do we best impact lives in this community. So having been here for a really long time, it's exciting for me, having seen a lot of change and what has evolved in the community, to be connected with that and as part of my job, being able to work with the community and the agencies. So one thing that's so exciting for us now is our partnership that we have at Booker Middle School. So it is our first, what we refer to as place-based initiative work. Um, and you know um, from challenges just in this community um, what people go through. And so what we're hearing from talking to community leaders, um, talking to grassroots folks who have lived here all their lives, 
um, to staff at, and the administration at Booker Middle, to parents. Um, it really is about being able to identify what are the things that they actually need. Um, not necessarily even want, because um, I want lots of things. Right. Um, but it's really, what, it, what do they need? And so being able to concentrate and build, if you will, not necessarily from a bricks and mortar standpoint, but build a, a resource center there for those families at Booker Middle um, is really so exciting. And it's one of those things that where I kind of get my jazz and I will jump up on a soapbox and start talking to people <laughs> about it. Um, because when you look at the studies, um, even ACT has done studies around you know, that middle that lost middle, they refer to it. And there's really great work being done in the elementary level, you know, through places like the Community Foundation, how they're attaching and partnering with, you know, the Patterson Foundation and grade level reading and how that kind of transitions into middle school. Mm -hmm. um, and then what's happening in middle school? And it really is about concentrating on those things and two generation because it's not only the kids, but it's the families. Right. And it's not even necessarily just mom and dad. It's aunts and uncles. It's grandparents. It's grand, you know, grandma and grandpa. It's the, the teachers that are there that there's so many expectations that teachers have on them now. Yeah. And so I hear LaShawn Frost, who's the principal of Booker Middle, talk about how she really feels like Booker Middle School is the best kept secret in Sarasota. And so one of United Way's um, uh, missions attached to breaking the cycle of generational poverty is to make sure that we tell people um, about Booker Middle School so that it's no longer Sarasota County's best kept secret. Right. Um, so giving challenge is the way that we're going to be able to do that. that is so awesome. there's um, some things that we're kind of keeping in our back pocket, oh. but we want to be able to let folks know all the really great things that are happening at that school. Um, and we have the vehicle to be able to do that now in a big way. Um, with the giving challenge. So it really is about bringing cohort groups together, um, dealing with the needs of the families that um, and their kids go to Booker Middle School. And if anyone's ever had a middle schooler, uh, I've had a middle schooler, and we know how challenging that is. So it's paying attention and really being able to develop some youth successes, whether it's financial stability, education, however we do that, um, and bringing great organizations together. Um, that's how we'll do it. Well, there's a, it's not the same old United Way. I know um, from years ago, United Way was always known as going into the companies and getting the companies to donate. Right. right. So taking on this initiative, this is something so exciting. Hands on. Yeah. Absolutely. So, hands so on. it's exciting for our resource and development folks because it really energizes them in a different way because of that thinking around campaign, right? And it was going into the workplaces and talking to folks about what United Way does, but this really kind of puts a different, some different legs to it and different, you know, again, some jazz to it around how you really are able to see what your dollars do from an investment standpoint. And I, and I think that's so powerful to people mm -hmm. because donors really want to know what happens to my money. When I give money to United Way, what happens to it? Mm -hmm. And so we're able to really put some meat around that conversation, whether it's early literacy, youth success, or financial stability, and really say these are the things that we're doing to be able to impact lives in this community. It's about educating them around things like VITA, which is our tax program. And to say, did you know that you can actually come in to a, a place where we partner with places like a Goodwill, or a Boys and Girls Club, and you can come get your taxes done for free. And we have qualified people to be able to do that. So it's all that where it's just not about campaign anymore. It's about connecting those campaign dollars to what we do, again, and I'll keep driving it, which is the mission of breaking the cycle of generational poverty. And what that does, exactly what you were saying, um, for donors out there who are looking at who to donate during the giving challenge or right. any time during the year, right. you want to return on your investment. You right. want to make That's sure right. that that organization is good stewards of right. your dollars. And like you said, putting this meat on it, it I think is fabulous. And also all the companies out there who are interested in corporate social responsibility. And corporate social responsibility is engaging on an issue. What better? issue is there right. than stopping this generation right. poverty. Right. That's well, fabulous. You want me to jump on a soapbox? Okay. Well, you need to. <laughs> She's short. Yeah. She's a short lady. But go ahead. 
it, it really is the powerful conversation now that is around career and college ready. It used to be a lot of the conversation all about college, right? Well, let's face it, <laughs> not every kid can go to college. Right. It may be that not every kid wants to go to college, mm -hmm. but they want to go do something that's really meaningful in their life. We live in a town where we offer great arts programs and, and you know, theater and whatever that might be, sports programs, whatever it might be. And so there's an opportunity with really great organizations like Career Source, um, Unidos Now, who concentrates on the high school level now and, and really deals with, with some of the challenges that happens there when you get into high school, and really being able to kind of focus on let's get our kids really good education Let's get them good foundation, and let's get them a high school diploma. Right. Well, let's get them a GED through right. Goodwill, right? So that when, if, if they don't have the ability to go to college, mm -hmm. they have the ability to stay in this community and be successful. And that makes this community a really, continue to be a really great community. Because when I sit and talk to parents, if all I'm going to talk to them about is how I'm going to get and help them to get their kids to college, yeah. and all they're worried about is paying their electric bill, right. I'm not successful in that conversation. I'm not making an impact in that life. But if I can talk to them about getting their kids a good education, graduating from high school, if they want to stay here, there's great certification programs in this community. And so they feel successful as a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle that they can help that child so that the conversation isn't just about college. It's about an education, and if they're gonna stay here, then they're gonna be a vital individual in this community, and that's what this community should want. Oh my gosh, I'm about to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even like are you about to start crying because I feel like you yeah okay yeah, well, so great all right so we're on the same page that's why I'm so that passionate and I, you have to shove me off the sofa yeah, yeah. yeah. because again that. I've been here for 30 years and so. not everybody like you said not everybody wants to go to a four-year right. university not that's everybody right. needs to go to one there's but so many, we want to make sure that they're successful yeah and, that and when you talk about that corporate responsibility that's where that connection is it, it really isn't just about school administration being responsible for our kids. It's about everybody being responsible for our kids. Amen. All right, so you just Ooh. got everybody, Ooh. everybody all pumped up to, to support and Ooh. help. I'm glad. What's the website? <laughs> uh, United, UnitedWaySuncoast.org. United Way, Way Suncoast.org. Okay. So make sure you're writing that down and September 1st, jump on the giving partner dot guidestar.org and type in United Way Suncoast. Yep. So it's a great you so organization. Much. You're welcome. Thank Very you passionate. for giving Very me so the awesome. venue to be able to talk about so it. Fantastic. Oh yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Whew. All right. <laughs> Switching gears Diane, for a minute. Give me a second. Are you gonna make us cry? Because I, I unless you're um, feeling weepy over fruits and vegetables, probably not. <laughs> I don't can we include beef? Yes, yeah. we okay. can. Yes, we yep. can. Diane Ingram from the Manatee County Agricultural Museum. So this is something new because I had no idea you existed. So I'm excited to hear more. I knew you existed. We, well, I know you did. we're one of those um, hidden gems that's often talked about. Um, we've um, been around since 1982, and we are located in the charming Palmetto Historical Park oh, in the historic district of downtown Palmetto. And um, we are an organization that's dedicated to preserving, sharing, and educating about the agricultural heritage of Manatee County. Oh. Manatee County started off as an agricultural community, and it still is, second only to tourism. And um, that heritage is a really important part of our local history, and uh, we provide um, all kinds of community programs, educational programming to adults and kids in order to get our message across. Um, this is our first year participating in the Giving Challenge, so we're getting our, our little hooves wet um, <laughs> as we wade in, and um, we haven't even had a Facebook page for that long, so the social media aspect is very new to us, and so it's going to be a fun adventure for us. Right there, can you, can you tell us what? Yes, that's us. Um, we are located in a building that was the original fire station, police station, and public works station for um, um, the city of Palmetto. Awesome. We put the shell of the barn over that original building. Wow. Um, and fantastic. it's very modern inside. We only have one room that actually looks like a barn, but when people <laughs> walk in the front door, they're very surprised because it's so rustic looking right. on the outside. Um, 
the um, exciting thing that we do that, that we're very dedicated to doing um, all school year long is working with preschool and elementary kids, teaching them about where their food comes from, how agriculture touches their daily lives. They, they can't even get dressed in the morning without being touched by agriculture, yet many of them think that cotton comes from sheep. Right. and eggs come from Publix, and they don't yeah. <laughs> realize that milk is involved in making cheese. Right. And so some of those facts that we take for granted, the kids aren't growing up on farms anymore for the most part. So they don't see it daily, so they need someone to teach them. And um, we are dedicated to doing this free of charge to our educational community. They may have to pay for busing to get to us, but the trip itself is free of charge. And it's a wonderful hands-on learning experience for all the children. And there's no age limit, right? Like if, if we wanted to come out and you know, take a tour. Oh, absolutely. We do adult tours right. all the time. We, we work very closely with um, high school groups, with um, FFA and Interact, and um, Manatee School for the Arts student government comes Fantastic. out. They volunteer for us all the time. And, you know, you were talking about having, having students learn the basics of being a, a functioning, producing member of our community. And we feel like we participate in that by giving volunteer opportunities to these kids and um, giving them responsibility and helping them realize that they can make a difference. They, they really can in their daily lives. Um, so that's um, something that, that we're involved in as well. I'm trying to sit still because I love agriculture. It's very hard for me Weren't to... Weren't you Miss Agriculture? I was actually the Florida Cattlemen's Association State Sweetheart from 2010 Sweetheart. to 2011. So I represented <laughs> Florida's beef industry for an entire year. But like, who's counting? Yeah. And, my, and for, my, for those of you who are interested, my background is agriculture and I did an internship in Tallahassee for ag lobby, lobbying. But um, it's just, it's a fabulous field. The people, you're great. The people involved in the field are so great. The industry is so important. 63 of Florida's 67 counties have agriculture, have, wow. have some kind of, whether it's livestock or it's, people don't realize it. It's right in our backyard. So it's it, great right. to have you guys mm -hmm. on the show to actually be able right. to talk about it. And Manatee County produces a whole lot of produce for the state uh, and across the country. I mean, our, our tomatoes, 70% of Florida's tomatoes come out of Manatee County. And we are held, and you guys are, the tomato growers and everything, they're held to the highest standards. I just, I love talking about our, our agriculture is, is just very advanced mm -hmm, from what it mm -hmm. used to be. Um, so what are you guys doing for the giving challenge then? Well, um, expect to see some um, cowboy, cowgirl type oh, graphics. Um, really? Yes, we're, we're putting together a fun campaign um, for social media. And um, we, as I said, we're just getting our feet wet. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's going to kind of be an exploration for us. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention, uh, which I don't think has been mentioned yet, is this year the Patterson Foundation is offering a wonderful opportunity to all organizations that are participating that new donors, their contribution will be matched 100% up to $250. So a $25 contribution, which for our organization can pay for fruits and vegetables for veggie painting for a class when they come out on a field trip. $50 becomes $100. That can buy us a whole slew of LED light bulbs, which is safe for the archives in the museum. Um, so anything up to $250 grows exponentially. And that's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity, especially for organizations like ours. Every single donor for us this year is brand new. It is brand new. <laughs> brand new. Because <laughs> it makes sense, yeah. That's great. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you earlier. No. Okay. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, well, we did a section, we did on one of my um, Fabulous Finds in Five Kelly's Corner segments a couple weeks ago. That's we had a country gonna... concert, and we actually do have cowboy hats and cowgirl hats at our Goodwill stores. Yes. Um, so you, if you want to, participate, you're more than welcome to head on over there and get yourself a pink cowgirl hat. Oh gosh, we might want to borrow some one. of them I know. for a little yeah, video. I would love, I mean, I, I would offer my service. I'd love to be in a video if that's what you're asking. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't well, think you are, I but I'm going to that way. But. Veronica wants to be there too. So. Yay, Veronica. <laughs> I, know, I, just, I got my I cowgirl boots dance. in the car. <laughs> we're we're going to do a country act. Veronica's going to rap. I'll sing. It'll be great. <laughs> I, I wanted to bring up um, years ago, I used to work for the Boys and Girls Club. And you're right, the education, because we were doing a healthy eating. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So for them to understand different fruits and vegetables, and it was brand new to them. 
Yeah. You know, like they've never seen a kiwi. They've never seen a papaya. Um, and it's just that educational thing of how things are grown, where they come from, and it makes better choices. Because right. knowledge is power, and then now they have the power to make change in, in their life. Right. So that is fabulous that you do that. And one of the neat things that we have in, in the historical park where the museum is located, um, we have a victory garden. Oh. Now, right now, it's just all mulched over, but starting in the fall, we'll have an active garden. When the kids come out on their field trip, they actually see us pulling up radish or seeing the tomato grow on the vine, and, and many of them have never seen that before. And you appreciate things more when you have to work for them. Oh, sure. Like, that's one of the reasons I don't eat salad is because it takes me so long to make it, <laughs> right? So when I do eat it, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I put so much effort into this salad. So it's just really, I grew up, you Beat know. Thing. Beef eaten, beef, beef meat and potatoes. I'm like, what's a vegetable? Sorry, Dad. <laughs> um, it's true, you know it. But I grew up in Mayaka. We were in 4-H, we were in FFA, and it's funny because going to college, I went to school in Tampa, and no, people don't realize, you know, that your food, again, doesn't come from Publix, that someone worked really hard. Someone's family tradition is raising those veggies if you decide to eat them, or not raising, I guess it would be growing, I don't even know the terms for <laughs> eating veggies, but it's, it's just interesting, and I love the Agricultural Museum. I think it's great. Do you guys still have the brand wall? Uh, that's actually been moved to the Harley Barn on the fairgrounds. Okay, all right. That was really what cool. What is that? What is that? So a brand is like your, it's almost like a logo for your, your cattle business. And, and so they were actually having people as a fundraiser, right? Um, that was done on the floor in the that, livestock right. room okay, the with floor. this. So yes, we still yeah, have so those as a fundraiser. So could I bring mine? Yes, you absolutely are. They're accepting for, for a small donation of $100, your oh, brand can be right. placed permanently on the floor there of the agriculture. I have it. It's rockin' KD. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Ag talk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia. Later. Yeah, I, I think the, the first museum I went to was the Scrapple Museum. Oh. Yeah, so we learned how to make mm -hmm. Scrapple. Yum. But for a fun time, that is, I, I always tell people, go to the agricultural, go, if you want to visit a farmer or ranch, reach out. There's so many local ranchers and farmers that they're, they're, they'll love you, love, I'm so, so, so excited, she, she they'd love to, to have you come out to their farms and ranches and show you and just go out to the agricultural museum and see what we have and how not to take it for granted. What are the hours? We are open Tuesday through Friday and the first and third Saturday of the month, 10 to noon and 1 to 4. And that's all on your website? It is. And yes. your website is? Our website is manaticlerk.com backslash historical backslash ag museum. So it's under the clerk. Yes, we have a wonderful relationship um, with four entities. We have our own nonprofit board of directors. We're our own corporation. Uh, we work collaboratively with the Palmetto Historical Commission within the Palmetto Historical Park. The clerk of the circuit court, we are their employees, those wow, of us who work there. And they provide cool. us with some support dollars so we can have things like computers and copiers. And then the city of Palmetto owns the property we're located on, and they uh, take care of our electric bill and our water bill. Very That's generous. Awesome. That's awesome. Very generous. Okay. All right. So now um, you gave us wonderful information and I again encourage everyone September 1st at noon and September 2nd till September 2nd at noon look for the United Way and the Manatee Agricultural Museum um, to find out more information and how you can get but now we're gonna put you on the spot because this section is called fabulous finds in five really now four minutes but um, okay. And it's time. Kelly's Corner, so take it away. Okay, so um, for those of you who are big fans, normally we show a picture of an outfit. And so I wanted to switch it up because people do forget that Goodwill is a great place to find home decor. And I'm actually in the market for some lamps. So for research, I was shopping and I said, hmm, I wonder if I could find some cute lamps. And I did, shockingly enough. So um, I brought these two. And I, the video really doesn't do them justice. I actually have them here in the studio. But um, so I went with two pairs. No, that's none, none of Essendon's fault. You guys are doing great. I'm just saying, I wish you guys could see these in person. Just They're call really me and I'll come pretty. to your house. Yeah. So um, I pat the pair on your, I guess it would be your right or your left, the crystal looking pair, I guess. I don't know yes. if it's your right or left. The, the ones without the shades, thank you. Um, which you can put shades with them if you like. You can leave them like this, it's great. Um, so those actually don't go together, but I place them together just because they're very similar styles and I think they look really sharp. And then we have a pair on the other side and those are Tiffany's style. So again, I always try to trick my guests. 
I usually always win the game because I can say if I win or not. And nobody will <laughs> correct me, Veronica. Okay, so if you had to pick our lovely esteemed guests, which pair do you think cost less? And I may be tricking you, you never know. I'm going for the Tiffany ones. You think they cost yeah. less? Mm -hmm. I agree. I, th I think the what are your What's your reasoning? Yes. What's your reasoning? Because I think you can find great deals at Goodwill. Okay. Okay. And Crystal, you think Crystal is worth more? I, I think they're older, mm -hmm. so their value may be mm -hmm. higher. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, you never well. asked me, but go ahead. Oh, Veronica. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry, Veronica. What do you think? Since you already know the answer. No. Okay. <laughs> then, then I won't. Okay. Just give me, Just, what would you think if you didn't know? If I didn't know? Well, which one would you pick? Which, oh, it's back on me. Yeah. Which one would you pick if you had to pick? What, As, which was less? No, which one do you like more? Oh, I like the Tiffany. Because it's got like the roses on oh, it. It's, it's got so such great pretty. detail, you guys. And it's these so were gorgeous. just put out on the floor. So and I, I know what Tiffany back. lamps cost. Okay, so how much do they cost normally? Uh, okay, so if I were to buy the a pair. pair of those, it would be at least twelve hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. So now, mind you, when we think when we find things at Goodwill, we have our pricers are trained to look for certain brands. They're trained to be good stewards of your donations. If you're going to give us something that's worth a little bit more, we're going to make sure we take that into account when we sell it. So they do pricing. They they do their research. They say, okay, here's what it's selling for online. Let's market at a percentage of that because we can help more people. Okay. Keep that in mind. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, ladies. Ladies. All right, drum roll, please. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so the crystal pair of vase, um, lamps, Whew, lamps, lamps. Um, they, that pair together is right under $16. The pair? The pair. So oh. one of them is $6.99, one of them is $7.99. Wow. That's awesome. Yep. The Tiffany lamps, in fact, are authentic. Um, mm -hmm. So that, I, I believe the base is sterling silver. That's what I was oh, told. Wow. Um, so that pair will sell for $150. Hmm. And they they found them upwards of four hundred five hundred dollars. So, so that's, oh, that's a steal. That is a major yeah. steal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so I, I tell people, you can go there to oh, Goodwill, well. you can find something for your house, and and it'll be four ninety nine. Because I like to decorate. Very. I just did my craft room, and I have a gold mirror that I got, and mm -hmm. I just such a good deal. It was like ten dollars, and it looks perfect. But you can also go there for these really cool high fashion items, couture, you can find great brands. You never know what you will find, so make sure you go often, and when you see something you like, you need to buy it, because it will not last. And what we love, again, our campaign this year is reinvent yourself, and you want to reinvent your living room, so think about that. And, and you're reinventing of, the lives of others. Exactly, and before I totally forget, yes. reinvent yourself campaign and your blog, yes. which if you go to experiencegoodwill.org, you can find it, or our Facebook, Goodwill Minnesota. Fashion and Fridays. one of the bloggers is Trish McConnell's daughter, Ashley, Ashley. McConnell, <laughs> and we love you, Ashley. But anyway, thank you, Trish, thank you for coming on and educating me about the Agriculture Museum. Had we no hope idea. To see you there. <laughs> we hope Perfect. to see everybody there. So, and I will see you next Sunday, hopefully at 9.30. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your week.